Hi, I am Xavier from Navy Recognition. Welcome to Sea, Air and Space 2014 near Washington DC. This is the largest maritime exposition in the United States. Most American businesses involved in naval defense attend the event organized by the US Navy League. One of the main points of interest at Sierra and Space this year is the full-scale model of the Northrop Grumman X-47B UCAS. Pablo Gonzalez, I am uh, the uh, UCASD program manager for Northrop Grumman. So the UCAS demonstration program was uh, all about demonstrating that an uh, unmanned, tailless airplane could be carrier capable in terms of being able to launch and recover from an aircraft carrier and operate with the uh, rest of the aircraft off of the ship. During the original demonstration program, the team achieved uh, the core objectives, which were to demonstrate launches and recoveries off of the ship. Um, since that time, we've done three deployments aboard different aircraft carriers. Um, we've done a series of uh, launches, recoveries, touch and goes off of the ship. Uh, to demonstrate that she's fully capable of uh, operating in the carrier environment. With the uh, success aboard the uh, George Bush uh, last summer, the uh, Navy made a, a decision to continue the program, and so uh, we are continuing to utilize the aircraft uh, to go explore other risk reduction opportunities uh, uh, for future carrier aviation um, aboard ships uh, this summer and uh, hopefully beyond. Doing? I'm Joe North, Lockheed Martin. I'm the Vice President of the Littoral Ship Systems. And I'm here to talk to you today about our domestic variant and a little bit of what we're doing with the international variants. Our domestic ship's 118 meters long. It has 180 metric tons of available space inside for mission packages. We can go to ASW packages, surface packages, mine warfare. This is showing the surface package on board here with 30 millimeter guns. We also have another module that sits just aft of it that would put a short range missile capability into the ship. Ram or C ram back aft, up forward 57 millimeter or 76 millimeter. As we look at the international market and what's desired out there, we've got one variant that is the same length, 118 meters. We've added a more capable radar, more powerful radar, Spy 1F. Back aft, we shrunk it to a single hangar door and we have vertical launch missiles on either side of it. 16 cells port and starboard for 32 missiles. Again, 76 millimeter being used a lot internationally. It's preferred gun out there. We have another variant that because of the infrastructure in the country, they asked for something a little smaller. There we went with about a 90 meter variant version. In there we have a CEA radar. We have CIWS, we have VLS. We can put sonars up forward on this mount. We have a towed sonar back aft. And we've maintained in all the designs a waterborne mission zone back in this last area 
where the ramp goes down into the water. We're about a meter off the, off the water line, and hard rigid boats can go in and out very easily, and very capable, up to about a 10 to 12 knot speed. A lot of different countries are interested in different variants. The plug and play, the modularity, and the volume that we have in here is what gives us the flexibility. This hull has been proven on a 67 meters up to 140 meters. There's ships out there, semi-planing monohull, steel hull, survivability built into that, that are, that are running around and operating and performing. So my bookends are there. The flexibility is all in how do you put the modularity and what do you put in permanently. And we've come up with some great ideas and options that have uh, dragged interest all over the round. Hi there, my name is Steve Froelich. I work at Lockheed Martin Mission and Unmasked Systems in Palm Beach, Florida. I am the program director for the remote mine hunting system. The remote mine hunting system is the Navy's premier capability for mine search and localization for today and into the future. The value proposition for the remote mine hunting system is that it completely removes sailors from the minefield. Today that mission is utilized with ships that are manned and they go into the actual minefield to hunt. This is an autonomous system that allows the sailors to remain outside the mine danger areas and allows them to safely search localized mines for eventual neutralization. This is a model of the remote mine hunting system. Primarily it is made up of the remote multi-mission vehicle, which is the vehicle right here, and the, uh, the sonar, which is the AQS-20. This system together is called the remote mine hunting system. Other parts that are not necessarily visible are the communication systems back to the ship so that during the prosecution of the mine hunting mission, it can report back the health and status of the system as well as report back some initial indications of the actual mission planning. The remote mine hunting system is part of the mine countermeasure mission package the mine countermeasure mission package is designated for the LCS class of ship. The LCS class of ship for the U.S. Navy is replacing three different ship classes and one of those is the mine hunting ship class. And so combined with the LCS package they will have two remote mine hunting systems on board the system and then they will be able to deploy and then extend this level of diplomacy around the world. So Lockheed Martin was contracted in 2005 to build the initial low rate initial production. We have since invested almost 20 million dollars locally at Lockheed Martin to improve this system and we look forward to taking this system into the future with the Navy's full rate productions. Hi, I'm Doug Denenny from MBDA in the U.S., and we're here at the Sea Air Space Navy League trade show. Uh, today at MBDA, we're marketing uh, very successfully with the U.S. Navy our dual-mode brimstone missile. The dual-mode brimstone missile is dual-mode because it has both a semi-active laser seeker with an integrated millimeter wave radar. Those two work together to create a missile that can have discrimination and also the ability to hit high-speed maneuvering targets, not only from land but at sea. In this trade show today, we're showing it in the air launch configuration, which would be underneath the wing in, in the UK under an RAF tornado. And we're actively marketing to the US Navy for the F-18 Super Hornet. Here's an example of the Super Hornet over here with a mock-up of 12 dual-mode brimstone missiles under wing. The F-18 uh, E Super Hornet is uh, widely used throughout the US Navy, over 500 plus platforms and also been sold to Australia. The dual mode brimstone is under wing here in this configuration now gives a unique salvo capability to attack the most challenging targets, land and as well at sea. The millimeter wave radar is able to lock onto these contacts and actually hit them going at high speed. Very unique for swarming boats because it's the only missile that has the ability to salvo fire into swarming boats. So there's great interest in the small boat swarming attack 
uh, challenge that's out there for the U.S. Navy. And that can be countered by using both helicopters. In this case, we show an MH-60 Romeo helicopter. Its ability to find and use a kill box and send large amounts of legacy or dual mode brimstone into a kill box. I mentioned both legacy and dual mode brimstone. The original brimstone missile just has a millimeter wave radar on board. That can be used for swarming attacks, but if you need discrimination, this is a helicopter showing its ability to actually use a laser just to hit the small boat that might be hiding amongst civilian traffic. And then finally, the, one of the key discriminators with brimstone is a salvo capability. You can launch multiple, in this case we're showing it coming from the littoral combat ship. You have a large attack coming in. Brimstone is a launch into kill boxes, hit multiple targets without having to individually target them with the laser. So it's a very capable missile, whether it's in the Maritimes off the surface ships, helicopters, or jet fighters. So for the U.S. Navy, we have multiple products. We've mentioned dual mode brimstone and the original legacy brimstone, but MBDA has a over 45 missile systems we sell throughout the world. The U.S. Navy is learning about our capabilities and is thrilled to have the opportunity to reach into these missile sets and find capabilities to help them with the most challenging targets. We've really enjoyed exhibiting here at Sierra Space and we look forward to uh, having our missile products on a variety of naval platforms. Commander Pete Burning. I'm a uh, requirements officer at Navy Expeditionary Combat Command. This is our uh, new Mark VI patrol boat. We're having uh, six of these currently built by Safe Boats International in Washington State, USA. It's an 85-foot aluminum hull, diesel-powered, water jet propelled uh, coastal patrol boat. Uh, it's equipped with uh, multiple weapon systems, anywhere from 20 millimeter Mark 50 chain guns to possibly future missile systems on board. It can operate UAVs, uh, the Mark 18 Mod 2 UUV, as well as uh, small teams of, of boarding parties and uh, VBSS teams. Uh, currently, we plan to, to buy six with the possibility to build up to 48 at some point for the Coastal Riverine Force. Right now, the prototype is already deployed overseas and operating in theater by the uh, Coastal River Rainforest. I'm John Perry business development director for BAE Systems out of our weapon systems business. I'm here to discuss the electromagnetic railgun. This is our current uh, 30 megajoule uh, electromagnetic railgun we've developed in partnership with the U.S. Navy. Uh, this uh, offers a capability to deliver projectiles out to ranges in excess of 100 nautical miles. BAE Systems is also working with the Navy in developing the hypervelocity projectile which is illustrated here in a full scale, and the system is subowed for the rail gun, but the Navy has also established a requirement to fire it out of a 155 millimeter projectile and the five inch Mark 45. So they'll develop a single round, qualify, but it'll be designed for the various platforms with a multi-mission capability. So you can address air targets, land targets, and surface targets all in a multi-mission uh, package at a very cost-effective uh, price range uh, relative to missile solutions. And we have it configured here uh, for a DDG-51 in place replacing the, uh, the Mark 45 system. 
so that the U.S. Navy continues to do trade studies to look for uh, the optimal solution and integration point for this technology, but it is certainly a game changer for the U.S. Navy and BA Systems is proud to uh, work with our partner, uh, the United States Navy. Christy Thomas, Director of Business Development for Ingalls Shipbuilding, and we have here a patrol frigate. It's based on a proven design from the National Security Cutter. It's been not three National Security Cutters have been delivered to the U.S. Coast Guard, and we continue to build those out. We've taken that hull form and we've militarized it by adding different combat systems, such as a 76 millimeter gun, vertical launch system a sea ram, harpoons, torpedoes, a towed array, and a hull mounted sonar forward. Uh, this ship has excellent sea keeping, it has uh, exceptional range, it has uh, fast speeds over 28 knots, and it can launch uh, helos and have boat operations in sea state 5 or better. Uh, these ships are coming down a learning curve, so they're very affordable, and they are um, <laughs> on schedule. They're able to be produced at a rapid pace for the customer. Uh, we're also very flexible with our combat systems. We're able to accommodate whatever customer combat systems uh, may be required. Uh, we are also interested, uh, we understand the Navy is looking at uh, alternatives for a small surface combatant. And although we don't know the requirements yet, we are interested in offering our patrol frigate for that. Good afternoon. We're here at Sea Air Space, and uh, we're at the Huntington Ingalls Industries booth. And uh, behind me is a picture of the CVN 78, the Gerald R. Ford. And I'm, in, I'm the uh, Rolf Barchi in charge of uh, the construction and testing and delivery of the Gerald R. Ford. Uh, currently, the ship is 75% complete, and we launched the ship last November, so took it out of dry dock, moved it down to an outfitting pier, and right now we're in the middle of outfitting the ship, putting furniture in, selling compartments to the Navy, and testing. So uh, some of the design differences with the ship is where the island is. Okay, The island's a little further aft compared to a Nimitz-class ship, and that's to make more room on flight deck. Kind of has a, a pit stop technology to it for quick uh, management of the aircraft when they land to get them ready to go back and uh, be launched again and go do their missions. So some of that design has has uh, manifested now, and it's also it's a little different than a Nimitz class. About the same size as a Nimitz class carrier, uh, but the capabilities are changed, so we can reduce the number of sailors on board. Uh, cut the costs of the ship over over the life of the ship. So a lot of um, technology has been brought to bear on this design so that it will, over its 50 year life, be cheaper to operate. Good morning, I'm uh, Wade Knutson from Raytheon, and I'm pleased to be here at Sea Air Space. As the DDG-1000 Program Manager, we are the Mission Systems Equipment Provider for the DDG-1000, which ties together the whole mechanical and electrical equipment on the ship that you see here, along with all the combat systems, ranging from the flight deck, to the vertical missile launchers, all the way through the total ship's computing environment, the SPY-3 radars, as well as supporting the 
two 155 millimeter guns that you see on the bow of the ship. We are pleased to be joining with the Navy in celebrating the christening of DDG-1000 on Saturday. Hello, I'm Tad Dickinson. I work for Raytheon Company. I am the program manager for the Navy's Air and Missile Defense Radar Program. Uh, AMDR is a program that provides new radar for the DDG Flight 3 destroyer. That radar is capable of multi-mission capability with ballistic missile defense, anti-air warfare defense, uh, environmental awareness, horizon search, volume search, so multi-missions all the time. This radar is 30 times more powerful and 30 times more sensitive than the existing SPY-1 radar. So that'll give the Aegis Combat Management System the capability to see further, see more targets, and to prosecute those targets with greater accuracy. This is enabled by the gallium nitride technology that's in that radar, which also provides the ship service life allowance back, where we're able to provide up to 30% volume savings, 10% uh, power savings, 12% cooling savings, and 7% uh, weight savings on the system. The system is also a 100% scalable design, so not only can it fit on a DDG Flight 3, but the Navy acquisition process allowed it to be scalable and fit on either smaller ships or even larger platforms. Uh, we are pleased to be working with the Navy and pleased to also be working with Lockheed Martin on the integration with the next advanced capability build. Uh, next that is coming up for integration of, into the combat management system. This is uh, the, the Kongsberg booth at uh, the Navy League Sea Air and Space 2014. Uh, the company is celebrating its 200 years anniversary and we have a, a solution for the uh, littoral <laughs> combat ship with uh, 12 long range missiles, the uh, NSM on elevating launchers. And we also have a similar solution for the uh, independence class. For the independence class, we, we have uh, three launching possibilities, a total of 18 missiles on elevating launchers. Uh, similar launcher uh, system as on the uh, new Norwegian Corvette the, of the Schold class. Hi, my name is Franz Edson. I'm the director of Mission Systems at Electric Boat, and we're here at Sea Air and Space to talk to you about a novel concept we have, something called the Universal Launch and Recovery Module. That's a system that allows us to deploy and recover very large unmanned underwater vehicles from submarines. The prototype that we're testing right now works on an SSGN, but in addition to SSGN, the tactical version that we're developing will interface with the Virginia Payload Module. Virginia payload module, as you're probably aware, is uh, the addition of four tubes to the Virginia class ship. Provides a tremendous increase in capability to Virginia payload module. So in addition to Tomahawks, you can carry univ this universal launch and recovery module and the deployed payloads. We've had this vision for a long time on how to deploy and recover large unmanned underwater vehicles from submarines. And we call it the universal launch and recovery module. And the concept is, add capabilities to submarines by virtue of being able to deploy and recover these large unmanned underwater vehicles. That way they can go off and do one thing, the submarine can do something else. So it's very cost effective. The way it works is we have something we call the Universal Launch Recovery Module, which fits inside an SSGN tube and will ultimately fit inside a Virginia Payload Module tube. 
This is a Lockheed Martin unmanned underwater vehicle, and you can see in our test facility out in, um, at Electric Boat in Groton. And here we are doing pressure testing with the actual payload, with the actual payload cradle in a, a test tube, which is identical to an actual SSGN tube. So as you can see, it comes out of the ship, axis vertical, it then rotates to axis horizontal. At that point, once it's axis horizontal, this is of course submerged, we'll release the overtoggle mechanism, the locking mechanism, release the um, buoy, and the vehicle will deploy. So what you see here is the identical payload cradle you just saw in our test facility. This happens to be in Lockheed Martin's test tank in Riviera Beach, Florida. This is actual at-sea footage taken of us releasing, and then in a moment you'll see us deploying, uh, excuse me, uh, recovering again, the same payload module, in this case on the seafloor off, of, um, off of Florida. You can see the capture mechanism here. It's very robust. It's a nice big aperture. Once it's recovered, it's pulled back down onto the payload unique cradle. And then after that, we're going to switch to the next, um, we'll go back to our test facility in, um, in Connecticut. So now once it's recovered, it goes back to axis vertical, then it comes back down into the tube. And once it's in the tube, we can then pump down the tube, we can um, gain access to it, we can recharge it, uh, replenish payloads, so on and so forth. But the whole concept is increased submarine relevance, increased submarine capability by virtue of the deployment and recovery of large unmanned underwater vehicles. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Steve Squires. I'm the program director for the C2 Greyhound at Northrop Grumman. Um, I'm here today to talk about our C2 modernization program. First, a little background on the C2. The C2 is a high wing, twin engine turboprop aircraft. It's a derivative of the E2C and is made to uh, fly uh, cargo and high, high priority cargo and passengers to and from aircraft carriers at sea. The, the C-2 is an extremely capable aircraft. It's capable of going uh, 1,300 nautical miles with 10,000 pounds of cargo or 26 passengers. The airplane is pressurized and, uh, and again, supports aircraft carriers at sea. It has, uh, let's uh, look down here. The, the airplane has a, a highly flexible cargo and uh, passenger area where we can take up to 26 passengers or uh, or cargo or combinations of both at the same time. The program we are recommending to the U.S. Navy takes the C-2 fuselage and combines it with the E-2D wing and engines as well as the E-2D cockpit components and avionics and combines it to modernize the C-2 at the lowest possible cost and the lowest possible uh, uh, life cycle cost. C2 modernization is going to save the Navy, uh, the U.S. Navy, billions of dollars in carrier onboard delivery. Its commonality with the E2D is key. The Northrop Grumman team is extremely proud to support uh, the U.S. Navy and other foreign countries in flying our aircraft around the world. <music> 